I want to show you, well, before we show you any photographs, let me just tell you that for approximately the first 30 years of my life, I always struggled with going back to default mode. And my default mode, ladies and gentlemen, was food. It was food. Now, for some others, it's smoking, it's drinking, it's women, or it's men, or it's relationships, or it's adrenaline, or whatever it is. But for me, it was food. I am a chocoholic. See, now, here's the thing about chocoholics. Chocoholics, they, they are carrying chocolate on them at this moment. That thing about a true chocoholic, they've got chocolate somewhere on them. They're packing chocolate. Now, the, most people, they're not chocoholics. They're caffeine addicts. Right? It's kind of like normal. You know, Starbucks is a billion-dollar organization because of all the caffeine addicts. Well, I don't drink that much coffee, but, man, I cannot function without chocolate. That's the way I am. And I, at, back in the day, I could consume a Pyrex dish of brownies in one sitting. You remember the... You know the, the, the Betty Crocker frosting? They had a Dutch double chocolate. I could clean out one of those in one sitting. And some of you are actually impressed with that. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. So let me show you what I used to look. This is what I looked. This was taken the summer that I walked into this church. 1995, that's the way I looked when I walked through, this, through the doors of this church. That's what I looked like when I finished the Holy Spirit Conference. And when, past, when Brother Charlie, I keep calling him pastor, when Brother Charlie, that's not a prophetic word, by the way. When Brother Charlie came up and gave me that word, that's the way I looked. And when he gave me that word, I was probably exhausted, zero energy. Two years later, I find myself in the doctor's office in Costa Rica, and Dr. Longsworth, who didn't have the best bedside manner, this is, what he, this is how he addressed me. I like doctors, first of all, that are motivators and positive, Right? <laughs> I like positive motivators when it comes to doctors, but I, for some reason, always get like the Grim Reaper. I mean, this guy's like, oh. He said, you know what? If you don't change, by the time you're 40, you're going to be dead. You're not going to see your kids graduate college. Your blood pressure is 170 over 100. You're 29 years of age. Your cholesterol is 300. You're toast. Thanks. Appreciate the motivation. God, what do I do? He says, stop treating your body like a trash can and stop running to food when things get tough. So the next day I got up and I started to jog. I ran a block. That was it. Next day I ran a block plus a mailbox. That was it. Third day ran a box, ran a block plus two mailboxes in Costa Rica in the tropics. That was it. I began to run and I began to eat more sensibly. I didn't have to become an athlete. I just have to stop treating this thing like a trash can. Right? Until finally, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good about things. And five years ago, I have Claudio Freyson in my office. You know who Claudio Freyson is? He's a great pastor in Argentina. He's 60 years of age, and he sits in my office about before I'm about to interview him on my radio program. And he says to me, I just ran the New York Marathon a couple months ago. I said, What? Because I kept hearing these voices in my head, oh, you're too old. Oh, you're getting old. You know, you're going to ruin your knees, you know, if you keep exercising. You know, you keep exercising, you're going to ruin your back if you keep exercising. You keep getting, trying to keep in shape, you're just going to hurt yourself. Pretty soon, the only, only thing we can do that's good for us is to eat keep Cap, Captain Crunch peanut butter kind of cereal. That's all we can do nowadays. He says to me, God challenged me to do something, and I decided I was going to run the New York Marathon. And I said to myself, well, friend, if he can run the marathon at 60, surely I can, get, I can, I can increase my mile and a half to do, do something. So I began to train for the Long Beach Marathon. And I can tell you that six months later that I ran and finished the Long Beach Marathon. Now, don't get excited. I did not win the Long Beach Marathon. Okay, I just didn't die during the Long Beach Marathon. The guy who won the, the Long Beach Marathon, by the time I crossed the finish line, this guy had already gone back to his hotel, he'd showered, he'd shaved, he ate, and he was on his way back to Africa before I even got close to the finish line. And there were temptations all along the way, just like you'll find in life. Every area 
area of your life, there are going to be temptations along the way to get you to get out of the race. Mile eight, I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. There are people, there are always people cheering on, yeah, yeah, you paid to do this. All kinds of crazy things happening in a marathon. But there are people at mile eight handing out donut holes. I'm like, are you kidding me? And there are people grabbing the, oh, yeah, grabbing the donut. I thought, maybe that's a new strategy, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to. Mile 18, I don't know who ever thought of putting the marathon path in front of a Starbucks. You might as well put the biggest temptation in the world in that window, a big chocolate mocha frappuccino with chocolate drizzling down the side. I saw seven people get out of the race at mile 18 and line up for the frappuccino. Are you kidding me? Now, inevitably, between mile 19 and mile 21, there's this thing in a marathon called hitting the wall. Anyone here ever run a marathon? Can I see a show of hands? All right. Anyone here ever hit the wall? Can I see a show of hands? All right. So we have some people who tried the marathon, didn't run the marathon, finished it, but did hit the wall. That is when your body runs out of glucose and your body says, we're done. Like, it will not take another step forward. Your body just shuts down. And there's a 10-minute time period where it switches from using glucose to burning fat. And as soon as you get into that mode, then you're golden because you got the fat to get you the rest of the, to the, rest of the, the, the marathon. But I can't tell you how many people I saw sitting down along the side of the marathon at mile 20, 21, just threw in the towel. And it reflected, it just pained me to see so many people in the same way as they're walking with Jesus, they just simply get out of the race. They just throw in the towel. They've hit the wall. They got nothing left. There's nothing left in the tank. And you know, the Lord comes along and says, you know, you don't have to break any records. I will walk with you to the end of this race, but you got to move. Got to get up. You got to move. Got to move in that direction. Crossed the finish line, and they gave me, <laughs> they gave me a medal. Here's your medal. And I hear my wife, she says, Jason, Jason. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know who I was, where I was. And they give you that medal, and I realized that I didn't earn the medal when I crossed the finish line. I earned the medal. Every day I got up to train for that race. You don't earn your crown when you get to heaven. You earn it every day you get up and faithfully serve the Lord. It's when you earn that crown. You just get it when you cross the finish line. 